And Elijah's an agnostic calling from California. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Elijah says it's logical to believe there's a God, even if you can't prove it. Hey, Elijah, how you doing? I am doing good. How are you guys? I'm doing all right. I'm wondering, John, when you hear that it's logical to believe something, even if you can't prove it, what, what question comes to your mind for, for Elijah? Um, I, I don't, I don't see how it can be logical. Like, I guess I don't see the logical soundness of that because like in my head, if we're thinking like from a pure syllogistic sort of argument, um, if, if you have premises, uh, that are not supported or not proven, then you don't have a sound logical argument. And if you can't prove your premise, then it, it, it seems like it would not be logically sound. So like, I guess I just, I don't understand how, how it would be logical. Like, uh, what would you, could you be justified in believing a God, even if you can't prove it? Uh, maybe, I don't know, but I mean, I, I definitely don't think that it's necessarily logical. Could you or maybe, maybe we have confusion that? about what it means to prove? So yeah. Yeah. Hey, Elijah, what's I your, think... what's your justification for this thing that you're saying? Yeah, I could see how that doesn't, makes sense how it's confusing um but i just think um i mean you know the big bang theory there's there's some some evidence and some facts some things we've seen that show that everything is moving out of a central point in the universe well uh, hold on elijah I, i'm so sorry to I'm so, yeah. Right. Elijah, sorry. I just want to interrupt real quick because uh, just you said that there's some evidence of it, but I mean, like, it's not just like there's some evidence of like um, the planets moving away from us or, or even redshift, which is, is kind of what you're referencing here. That's one aspect of it. That, but I mean, there's not just some evidence of the, the near instantaneous inflation of, of the universe. Like you understand that we have a picture of it, right? Like we, we literally have the mi cosmic microwave background radiation picture that shows, you know, uh, sometime after the inflation. But I mean, it's a picture of of the inflation event uh, as it as it happens. So, like, it's not just the we have some indication that it's there. And so like, it's not like it's somehow comparable to believing in God. I mean, we, we, we have mountains of evidence to like show that there was an inflation and then other attributes surrounding that. Like, how did it happen? Why did it happen? Uh, is it going to happen again? Is this the only time that it happened? Like those kind of questions. Sure. We can't answer just yet definitively, but I feel like what we can definitively say is that, yeah, there was an inflation event at some point. Uh, beyond that, uh, yeah, you know, we don't have good. So so what there's were you getting like, to? Um, there's, yeah, there's overwhelming evidence that the Big Bang Theory is a thing that happened, right? Um, but we don't know what came before that. Okay. And so I guess if we that's don't know something, my point. if we don't know something, is it reasonable to believe an answer when you don't know? Um, I guess if you don't have any evidence, uh, it's not reasonable to believe it. Um, so, okay. But I, so when I you say, I'm sorry, when there's I, a delay. Uh, yeah, no, I noticed that. Um, I mean, I just think it's reasonable to believe that there is some kind of greater power that we could call God that right. just did something and put this whole universe into motion at the very beginning of time. Well, I think it's what's more the reasonable to believe for that. that you, so, so created what, here, it. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We need to know what the justification is. I know that you think it's reasonable. I'm calling horseshit on that because. When it comes to Big Bang cosmology, we're not even saying it's true. Science doesn't make proclamations of what's true. Science says, hey, we need to explain the expansion of the universe. And not only do we have a picture of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which perfectly matches a prediction of that model, but that model may not be completely correct and accurate, and we are currently refining it. But we, the math works out to... 5.39 times 10 to the minus 44th of a second. 
So that's 0 0.440539 of one second. That's how far back to when the expansion started, how close we can get to it before the math breaks down. And beyond that, we can't really say anything. And so how do you, what justification can you have for saying prior to the Planck time, at a point where we have no ability to investigate, I'm going to go ahead and conclude that there was some being who did it on purpose. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if I could say the, the being did it on purpose, or maybe it's just that there was no other choice. I mean... Okay, how do you know it's I a just, being? I don't know it's a being. Um, okay, I don't think is, God is God a being? Like, you know, I I don't know I don't know how to answer that question. Okay, I let, feel Elijah, like God is Elijah, a little bit let's in everything. Be honest. Let's be honest, Elijah. What you're doing is saying, here's something big that I don't know, and so I'm going to stick the God label there, and I'm not going to use the God of classical theism. I'm not going to claim to know anything about a God, and this will ease my conscience so that I don't have to acknowledge that I don't actually know the answer. So you're going to pretend that there's something there, maybe, and you're going to pretend that you're justified in calling it God, when the truth is you have no way of knowing anything at all about what comes prior to the Big Bang, or even if the, even if the sentence prior to the Big Bang makes any sense. But you are so uncomfortable with acknowledging that you don't know that you'd much rather just say, oh, I think it's reasonable to believe there's something that we might be able to call God that might have done it. I guess that is what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, throughout history, different groups of people around the world, they, no they make up ideas of a god or gods to explain things that they don't understand, right? Yes, and which is what you're doing. Sort except of, it's except sort of god, illogical. And you're doing that, yeah, Elijah. That, that's what you're doing, except that, that your that god is, doesn't... That is what I'm doing. Elijah, let me finish. Elijah, let me finish. That's what you're doing, except your god can't explain anything. See, we explain things in terms of other things that we understand. You cannot solve a mystery by appealing to a bigger mystery. You have solved absolutely nothing. All you've done is assuage your own personal discomfort with acknowledging that you don't know how it started. What's wrong with just, when, when you get to the point of saying, hey, what's the explanation for the origin of the Big Bang expansion? What's wrong with just saying, I don't know? Well, I would say I don't know. I, I would say I don't know, and I just think it's more reasonable to believe that there is a greater power that set everything Prove into it. motion. Prove it. What? What? Prove yeah. That what, it's more reasonable. Why is it? Yeah. Why is it more reasonable? Because it's it doesn't make sense to me to say that before time began there was nothing. Okay. And so so hold on. Hold on. One second. Is, what, does it make sense to you? And I guess that's the truth. Before time began, there was nothing. But I, you know, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, and I know you're not going to like this, I think um, God is always going to be this inexplainable thing. It's like too, too massive and powerful for us to even fathom. How do you um, know it's massive and powerful? I, um, because I am a small little human on a giant planet in a giant universe. Um, I so so I've been listening. It's and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna I've been listening. I'm gonna stop because I know John wants to get in here. But what you've told me is you're a small little human that doesn't have a way to know something, but you think you've determined that you know what the most reasonable answer is, and that it's a God that you can't really understand, that is bigger and powerful, and you have no way to justify any of this, and all of it is based on your own discomfort with failing to acknowledge that you don't know why there's something instead of nothing. Um, none of that makes it reasonable, and when I asked you why it was reasonable, it's like, because it doesn't make sense to you. Well, I'm sorry, but your personal befuddlement does not a standard of reason make. I'm sorry, that went that went over my head. Could you say that one more time? <laughs> Just call me God then, because I'm also over your head. 
Well, so, so, so Elijah, think- I, I was wanting to, well, if we can, um, I, I, yeah. I was wanting to go back because your statement, you said before time and like, I feel like you should have just stopped there. Because like I don't I don't understand what before time means. Like, how can you really conceive of anything before time began? Um, no. Okay, what does it mean to exist outside of time? Right. What does it mean to exist outside of time? Uh, to exist outside of time seems like it would be to not exist at all ah bing bang boom (laughs) yeah um so Uh, i i would agree i i would agree if you're if you're existing outside of time and space then it's like you don't exist at all but so starting from there um the scientific hypothesis that we've been able to come up with as far as like you know the beginning of of this universe and everything like that definitely does not include an absolute nothing like a lot of apologists like to mention out there, which I feel like is what you were actually alluding to when you said nothing. Typically when people say nothing, they mean absolute nothing. But I mean, if you just, you know, think logically about what we know about like energy and everything like that, um, you would know that energy can't be created or destroyed. So energy uh, seems to be this eternal thing. Um, So there would definitely have not been nothing you know, prior to the inflation of this universe, uh, energy would have had to have been stored somewhere in something. And I, I personally, um, like the leading hypothesis as far as like what caused the inflation. And that's the, um, sort of this quantum scalar field, quantum tunneling explanation. And that's where you've got a, a quantum scalar field that's in a false vacuum state. And, uh, for a reason or no reason at all, we were not really sure it fluctuated from this false vacuum state into a true vacuum state. And at that point it, uh, you know, uh, uh, released an immense amount of energy that filled our universe. And that mm-hmm. is the uh, near inflation of our universe, near instantaneous inflation of our universe. And so uh, that's why they call it like a big bang because um, it resembles like what happens whenever you set off like dynamite or something like that. Like um, when you set off dynamite, chemical energy is, you know, transformed into, you know, uh, other kinds of energy and explodes. Uh, kind of the same thing with this uh, fluctuation from the false vacuum state into the true vacuum state, a massive amount of energy is released at that point. And so like all all of this to say, I don't see where God actually factors into that or why there needs to be any kind of uh, God factor or entity or anything like that. Um, and, and, And also just to go back in on the whole nothing thing, that definitely means that there wasn't nothing there there's always been something we just don't know what the state of that something was prior to the inflation of the universe is there a i'm curious i want to look into it more is there like a name for this um quantum tunneling thing you're talking about like a, a name for um, the theory where like yeah what oh, i mean there's the the, the, I can't think of what the name of that hypothesis is, but there's like a number of hypotheses out there. Like if you go to, um, uh, I can't remember what the, what the, the science YouTube channel is. Um, I think it might be the, the PBS, um, space and time channel. They, they, they have like, uh, an entire video on the, on the best explanation of the inflation of the universe. And, and they mentioned this particular hypothesis, uh, amongst other hypotheses, like there's, uh you know the um the bubble uh bubble universe uh hypo- hi- hypothesis where there's you know there's a bunch of bubbles of universes that pop in and out of existence and everything like that so like there's a lot of different uh ideas out there that's just like uh the one is as, as far as like the last time I went and I did a deep research on it, that was the one that was uh, favored amongst um, like astrophysicists and physicists, uh, theoretical physicists and all that. Uh, That's the one. Uh, Sorry, Matt, were you going to say something? Yeah, just real quick on Mondays on this channel, there's a show called Skeptalk and frequently on there is Dr. Aaron Adair um, who would be able to answer your questions about physics uh, better than any of the rest of us on the channel. Okay. That sounds cool. Um, hmm. 
I'm, I'll yeah, just, I mean, you, I, you head off and think about that stuff. I'm going to try to get to a couple other calls here real quick. And I got some announcements to make, but that's a lot of food for thought. You can dig around, look into that. Also, you know, watch for Skep Talk when, when Dr. Dare's on. Um, Cause I know, he, I know he'd sure. be more helpful than, than we are, but thanks. And okay, something is just because you can't personally think of something better. That's, that's not how reason works, but keep going. Keep asking questions. Hey, if you liked that clip, you'd love the whole thing. Hit like, subscribe, yeah. leave a comment, patreon.com slash call the line. <laughs> that one sucked. <laughs> Use it. <laughs>